Hello, my name is Andrew Caratu. I'm a teaching assistant at Matopia Academy. And now I will be going over problems 10 and 11 from the Amy 1 2022, these two geometry problems. Um, yeah, so let's start with number 10. So three spheres with radii 11, 13, and 19 are mutually externally tangent. So that's kind of uh, like th these three words are a lot, but what they really mean is just we have these three spheres, right? Like, let's say we have like one over here and then it's touching uh, another one. And then there's a, a, another one like over here. It's pretty hard to imagine, but in 3D, it's like that. And you can kind of imagine how it would look if we're looking from the top, right? Like if we're looking from the top, it would just look like three circles. Like we would have circle of radius 11, we would have a circle of radius 13, and we would have a circle of radius 19. It'll look like this, right? And we have these three spheres, right? We're looking up from above right now uh, and they're mutually externally tangent. And the plane intersects the spheres uh, and it creates three congruent circles, right? And they're centered at A, B, and C respectively. And the centers of the spheres all lie on the same side of this plane. And then it, and then it gives us some weird rule it's telling us AB squared has to be 560. And then it's asking us for AC squared. So this looks a little bit difficult. So it's, first of all, the what's really hard to imagine is how we can just figure out uh, like what, what the plane would even be doing at this point, right? So let's try focusing on just two spheres, right? So let's focus on the spheres with radius 11 and 13, since actually the circle uh, that is in the sphere with radius 11 is the one centered at A, and the sphere with radius 13 contains the circle that's centered at, rate, at point B. So that's what we really need to focus on because we're looking for AB squared. So let's kind of like zoom in a little bit, right? So we have 11 and then we have 13, it's slightly bigger. So what will this plane do? Well, in 2D, right, um, this plane will look like a line, right? So let's say this line uh, intersects. These two are the cross sections of the spheres and they're the cross sections of the spheres at their widest point. So like if we showed like the full sphere in like a diagram, right? Like, like it's, it's hard to visualize, but if these two are the spheres, right? We can imagine that we're taking the cross section, kind of this cross section, right in the midway point, right? The midway point, we're ignoring the stuff in the front and we're ignoring the stuff in the back. We're just talking about this uh, midsection, right? And same thing with this sphere, we're talking about this midsection, right? And we're talking about the plane, right? The plane is like some rectangle that intersects it, right? It intersects it like here and it intersects it here. But we're just looking at this midsection. So we're looking at the two diameters of the two, of, out of the three congruent circles it makes, these two are two of the congruent circles. And in 2D, these two uh, lengths would be the diameters, right? And in fact, it's, that's all we really need in terms of visualization in order to solve the rest of the problem, because that means that these two lines here, if we call the in common radius, right, between the circles, if we call that radius R, well, then this would just be 2R, this would just be 2R. And then from here, uh, we can clearly figure out what the distance between these two centers would be in terms of R, right? And then since we know the distance between them is the square root of 560, we can solve for R. So let's try that. So if we try drawing in uh, this length 11 and this center, right, this length 13, and then we can draw these altitudes uh, in order to create lengths of R like this. So we have R, we have a length of 11, we have length R, we have length 13, and then we connect these two and we see we make a nice trapezoid. And this is very good because from here, we know this length, uh, we know these two triangles in terms of R, right? We know exactly what they'd be like because we know the two sides and an angle. So we know exactly what the trapezoid would look like in terms of R, all the vertices are defined in terms of R. And then we can just use the fact that this length is root 560. So uh, what we can do is we can move up the length AB, we can move it up to here using a rectangle. Uh, and keep in mind, this point here is A, this point here is B, and we're kind of moving it up here by making a rectangle in order to make this right triangle, right? Uh, let, me, let me highlight that in red. This right triangle right here, 
and we want to focus on this right triangle. Let me draw it, right? Because we know this length here is the square root of 560. We know this length here, well, that's 11 plus 13. Remember, because this is the radius of that sphere and this is the radius of that sphere. So 24. And then this is, we don't know, but we can clearly use the Pythagorean theorem. We just, you know, take 24 squared minus 560, subtract, take the square root. Clearly this would be uh, 16. So then we just take the square root of that and we get that this length here is four. So let's return to the diagram. We know that this is four. Let me erase this to make more room. So we know that this is four. Um, and now, right, we, we can find this length in terms of R and we can find this length in terms of R. And we know that using the rectangle, if we bring this length over, we know the differences between those two lengths is four. So now we can solve for R and it looks like it will end up being something messy, but in reality, it's actually not. Um, it's not too messy because uh, as you'll see, a lot of R terms cancel. So square root of 13 squared minus R squared, right? This is equal to four plus the square root of 11 squared minus R squared. So, well, what, what can we do now? We can just, you know, take the square root of both sides, see what happens. 169 minus R squared on this side, right? We square it. And then on this side, if we square it, well, we have like this binomial four and a root. So it's just the four squared. And then we add on the root squared, which is just this. Uh, and then we add on two times the product of these two terms, which is just eight times the radical and just like that. Right. And so now exactly what I was talking about before, we get a lot of nice canceling that makes it a lot easier. So now we can just bring this 121 over. If we bring that over, we end up getting 48 on this side. And then what we can do is we subtract the 16 and end up with 32 over here and then divide the eight from both sides. And we end up with just four on this side. So it's four is equal to that. And now if we square both sides again, we get 16 is equal to 121 minus r squared, rearranging terms. We easily get r squared is equal to 105. And this is very important because now if we move on to what the cross section of the sphere here, this sphere of 11, and then if we compare it with the sphere of 19, right? What's actually going to happen here is now before, right? We knew what this length was and we used it to determine r. Now we can use the fact that we know what r is in order to determine the length and then square it, and that'll be your answer. So we just draw the exact same thing. We draw the exact same thing, right? We draw in this with the equal radii like that. Let me redraw this to be a little bit more accurate, uh, like that, that radius. And it goes right through there and then right there. And then as you can see, this is 11. Uh, no, wrong line. Uh, this length here is 11, this length here is 19, and what we can do is we can just reverse engineer exactly what we did. So this length here we know is r, so it's the square root of 105. So 121 minus r squared gives us uh, 16, so this length here is the square root of 16, which is 4, and then we do the same thing here, 19 squared minus 105, 361 minus 105, and this gives us the number 256, which it actually is 16 squared. So this is just 16. Um, and now let me just let me just draw in blue what this is again. And even though it doesn't really look like it in this case, from the rectangle, we see this length here is four and this length is 12. It doesn't look like it, but that's what the lengths are. So now we take this 12 here, and now we can use the Pythagorean theorem in order to get this length. So 30 squared minus 12 squared. And that actually gives us this length squared, which we know from the rectangle is just this length squared. And we know this is just A, this is just C. So we're done with the problem. All we have to do is just compute 30 squared minus 12 squared in order to get the length squared. And that's just going to end up being, if we compute it, right? 900 minus 144. And that's just going to give us 756. Yeah. Yeah, this is a nice problem that uses 3D geometry. It's very nice. Uh, now we're going to move on to problem 11. And this one is kind of goes back to 2D, right? So this one is a lot easier to visualize, but it's harder 
to figure out what you're supposed to do in order to solve it, right? So it gives this parallelogram here, it gives a circle, and it gives a line going through this circle, right? That, that's all it gives us, just these three shapes. And it just gives us these three lengths that it divides it into three. This length here is nine, and this length here is 16. And it, there's these three points of tangency. That's the only thing we're really given, right? Uh, other than the lengths. So I'm gonna call these three points T1, T2, T3, just for reference, right? And now immediately, right? Um, the, what's the beginning part of this, the, what, what you can easily see right away is that the circle here with the line and the tangents, right? It immediately says use power of a point, right? So let's use power of a point, uh, using it on T2, C, and Q and P, right? With those, those four points, we get that T2, C squared uh, is equal to 16 times and then 16 plus nine, right? And then uh, from here, we immediately get T2C is 20. And from uh, points A, T1, P, and Q, right? What we uh, get is T1A squared. Well, this length is just equal to 3 times 3 plus 9. And this multiplies to 36, uh, thus telling us T1A. Well, this is just 6. All right, so let's write in all those lengths. So we get T2C is 20, and we get this length here, 6. And just like we said, uh, like if we use power of a point here, right, we immediately get AT1 squared is AT3 squared. So it's pretty obvious these two are equal. And we just uh, move the 6 over, 6, 6, right? And then we know these two tangents are also equal, uh, but we don't know what that uh, length is. So we can just call them X for now, right? So now um, we, we've gone to this point of the problem where we have a lot of the lengths written in, but the main problem is we don't actually know how far the parallelogram stretches, right? Like here's the circle, here's these three lines. We know that these two lines are parallel, um, but we, we've already used all that. The only thing we don't really know is this length, right? Like it could go all the way over to here, right? For all we know, if 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 we may, if we drew the diagram to scale, the parallelogram could stretch all the way over to here, or it could be as short as this much, right? Um, all we know is that the circle's tangent to these three sides. We don't know anything about this side, and the only relation we have that relates the side to everything else in the diagram is this single diagonal. We know the full diagonal's length is three plus nine plus sixteen is twenty-eight. So we think, how can we figure out what this length is? Well, what haven't we really used? We haven't used, we've used this triangle up here, right? We've used power of a point on it a lot, but we haven't really focused on this downside. And the key thing about this downside is that this T3 here is another point of tangency, but not only that, but if we draw in the center here, right? T2, uh, the center and T3, those three points are collinear, right? Because of the two parallel sides. So that's kind of the final part of the problem we're not really using. So uh, of course, what we should do in this case is draw in the radii, right? So this is R, this is R, this is R. Um, it'll help to kind of just get rid of this line here. It's a little bit distracting, but yes, this is good. Um, because now using these three lengths, right, of R, um, we don't immediately see what R can be, right? What we really need is one variable. We don't want X and R because uh, dealing with one variable within Pythagorean theorem is enough. So we need to somehow relate X and R to each other. And uh, there's there's a perfect way to do that. And that way is to draw in this length here. Let me, let me change to a different color. This length here and this length here, right? Making this triangle over here. And the special thing about this triangle is, well, we know this angle plus this angle, those two angles, they sum to 180 degrees. And we know pretty clearly uh, from going to the center that it's tangent with, right? We know from the tangency points, if we draw this altitude as well, right? This altitude, um, we can pretty clearly see, right? This triangle here is congruent to this triangle, right? Which uh, tells us that these two angles here are equal. And same thing here, these two triangles are obviously congruent. So these two angles are equal. 
So that immediately says, well, this is one, this, these two sum to 180. Well, half of this angle plus half of this angle is half of the sum, which is 90, which means this triangle is a right triangle. And that means we can figure out uh, the relationship between X and R because, well, we don't know exactly what these two lengths are. We don't know what they are. We just drew them in, but we can use Pythagorean theorem with this triangle here and this triangle here. If we use those two triangles, we can uh, find out what that, those two sides are and then use it to figure out what uh, it, R would be in terms of X. So let's do that. Well, what is this side squared? Well, that side squared is just equal to X squared plus R squared, right? And then if we add on this side squared, uh, this side squared, right? Which is just R squared plus six squared. Well, then we get this squared plus this squared, which by the Pythagorean theorem for the third time now, it's this, which is six plus X squared. So now we have a, an equation. And if we expand this and simplify the terms, we're going to immediately get something much nicer. We just get this. 2R squared is 12X. So R squared is just 6X. R is the square root of 6 times X. So that's all we really needed. We just needed R in terms of X. So now uh, we can finally utilize the right side of the problem, right? So let's erase all this. I'm going to redraw the radii here. Right? We don't care about this radii anymore, right? So we'll just ignore that now. Um, and now all we really care about is this length, which we know is two times the square root of six R, right? That full diameter there. And the reason why we only care about the diameter now is because this is, this is what we really needed. We needed to shift it over to here in order to make a right triangle over here, right? Because now we know this is two times the square root of six R. And now the important part is we know that this it, uh, at 6x, my bad, my bad, my bad. Uh, this is 6x inside here, 6x. And if we bring over this length of the parallelogram, we get this is 6 plus x. And that's very important because now we can use Pythagorean theorem to solve for this length in terms of x. If we square this, 6 plus x squared minus, and then this squared, well, that just gives us 24x, right? And then this is x squared. Uh, that binomial here is x squared plus 12x plus 36. And then subtracting this 24x, what that does is make this from a 12x to a negative 12x. So this is just going to become 6 minus x squared, right? Well, now, now this uh, we know that this length is 6 minus x. But of course, now we need to know what is this length? Is it 6 minus x or x minus 6, right? Well, this goes back to the final piece of information in the problem we still haven't used yet. Angle BAD is less than 90. And the thing about angle BAD being less than 90 is it means that this circle here is going to touch BA. It's going to touch it up at a higher point. And what that means for X related to 6 is that X is going to be smaller than 6, right? So what that means is that this length here well, it has to be positive. So it has to be six minus X and not X minus six. And now we're at the final part of the problem because we know this full length here from up here, right? That length is just 20 plus X. And now adding all of this together, 20 plus X plus six minus X gives us 26. So now we're left with this final triangle, this beautiful triangle. I'm going to put it in green, right? Let's move it over here so we can see, see it more clearly. And now we just have this length here, two times the square root of x, uh, 6x, and then this full length here, right? Which we know from the original conditions of the problem, 3, 9, 16. We know that uh, this is going to add up to just 28. And then we know this side length here is 26. So now we can finally solve the problem because we know 28 squared minus 26 squared that's going to be equal to, uh, if we square this, we're going to get 24x. So we just get this. And then if we uh, use difference of two squares here, that just ends up being 54 times 2 is 24x. We're going to immediately get from that that x is 9 halves. And then we finally apply that back to this parallelogram here. Remember, what it's asking for is the area of the parallelogram, right? And what that's going to be is just uh, base times height, the space here, which is just 20 plus X, right? So 20 plus 9 over 2. 
and then we're multiplying that by the height, which is just two times the square root of six X. Well, if we put in the nine over two in, it ends up being uh, nine times three, 27, right? So then we get three root three times two, six root three. So we're just multiplying this by six root three. And if we finally do the final computations, 20 plus nine over two, that's 49 over two. And then if we multiply that by six, uh, the twos cancel out and we're left with 49 times three, and that's 147. And then we multiply by the square root of three, and that's gonna give us our final answer has to be expressed in this form, m times the square root of n. And our final answer is just m 147 plus n three for a final answer of 150. Yeah, so this was uh, the problems 10 and 11 of the 2022 Amy one. Thank you for watching.